we continue to follow developing news this morning. One person's been killed. Four others have been injured in a shooting. Police were called to the parking lot of North Albion Collegiate Institute near Mount Olive Drive and Kipling just before 11 o'clock last night. Police have not confirmed the identity of the person who was killed. We do know that paramedics took a 50-year-old man who was taken to hospital in critical condition. Four other adults, they were hospitalized in serious condition. A black truck was seen leaving the area. Mount Olive Drive is closed between Kipling and Silverstone Drive for the police investigation. Stay with CP24 for the latest. And right now we are expecting a press conference to start from police about this. Let's listen. What happened? Thank you, sir. Good morning. My name is Phil Campbell. I'm a detective sergeant with the Homicide and Missing Persons Unit with the Toronto Police. Last night at approximately 10.53 p.m., police received a call for a shooting in the parking lot of the North Albion Collegiate Institute. Officers arrived on scene within three minutes where they located five victims suffering from gunshot wounds. Officers immediately attended to the victims, providing first aid. All victims were transported to the hospital, and I can confirm with you that one male has died. Currently, four other people remain in hospital. One of the victims has serious life-altering injuries, and the remaining three are being treated for gunshot wounds. All other victims are older men. We are looking for a black or dark-colored, newer model pickup truck. The two suspects we believe involved are wearing dark clothing. We are currently canvassing the area for evidence and video footage and are asking that anyone with any information reach out to us or anyone who was in the area at that time and may have video or dash cam footage, please contact us or call Crime Stoppers. You will see an increased presence of police officers in the area, including our neighborhood community officers. We are asking members of the public to please speak to officers if they have any information. You can also contact Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS. I'll now take a few questions. What was happening there last night? Was there a gathering and how many people were there? Well, from what I understand, it's just a group of men that were gathering after playing soccer in the afternoon, really just uh, socializing, uh, enjoying the fresh air. And uh, we think maybe there was 15 to 20 people, but that's something we're, we're confirming and we're looking into. What can you tell us, Steph, about the, um, the victim? The men who passed away. You mentioned the four others are older men. What does that mean? Well, when I say older, I want to put the age range of 40 to 60. Um, I don't know too much about the victim right now. It's still, it's still very early in our investigation, and there's a lot of things that we have to look into. Was the victim targeted, or were these... I mean, I don't really know how to word, word this, but um, was the shooting targeted, and were all five of the people... What were some of them just caught... Caught up and the, that's, that's a great. Sure. That it's it's really early. Uh, there's still a lot of things that we have to look into. Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. Like I said, very early. Uh, our team got called out last night. We've been on it ever since, and there's a lot of things that we're looking at right now, including any evidence in the area and, and interviews. We saw a lot of shell casings and evidence markers. Any indication whether there were multiple guns firing at one another or a semi-automatic weapon? I, I don't believe it was a shootout. I believe it was one-sided. And uh, as far as uh, the number of bullets or casings, I, I can't confirm that right now. You said that you're looking for a uh, black or dark colored newer model pickup truck, two suspects, um, your video, and do you believe that they roll in and, and start shooting, or what, can you paint a picture of what you think happened? Well, again, uh, like I said, it's very early. We want to do uh, a lot of checks, and we want to look into a lot of the information that we have before we confirm or, or uh, come up with a narrative. Is this a drive-by? Yeah. Or did the suspects get out of their vehicle and begin firing? You say it's one direction. Well, the, the suspects were in the area in a vehicle, and we believe they exited the vehicle and shot at our victims. How long about did this all take place? Was it four minutes? I, I would say a, a fraction of a minute, yeah. You know, there was no exchange? Uh, we don't believe so right now. Are, are the victims... Cooperating, are they being helpful in, in helping identify who these suspects might be? If, if this is not a random shooting, if this is presumably it's not, it's not targeted. Yeah, the victims are very helpful, and they're providing uh, the information that we've asked. Neighbors told us that these guys show up to do barbecues, they play soccer, they play dominoes. We can see dominoes over there. 
So these guys are just there for like leisure time and somebody rolls and shoots. Is there a reason for these guys to roll and shoot on a bunch of people? Is there somebody in the crowd that they were trying to target? Yeah, I don't have the answer to that question. I, I Like I said before, they were just a, a group of males that were enjoying the summer air and uh, playing soccer and then taking a break after and hanging out. I guess the question is like, should we, is there concern that this could be a random? I'm going to defer that to you, sir. Thank you. So I'd just like to update you on a couple of other situations that happened. Uh, one at, on Saturday night, uh, just after 10 p.m., there was another shooting at, in the 1800 block of Martin Grove uh, Road, which is the area of Martin Grove and Albion, where a 20-year-old victim su suffered multiple gunshot wounds. Uh, that, that individual was taken to, to hospital, obviously with some serious concerns for his health. Uh, we believe he was a totally innocent victim. And, uh, you know, at the present time, we have no suspects or suspect information that we can share. Um, later on that night, at about 2.40 in the morning, there was another shooting in the area of Rich Grove and Martin Grove Road, where a 14-year-old victim was walking out of a, an apartment building and he was randomly shot as well. This individual, this young man, was taken to hospital with some serious wounds as well, and he's recovering in hospital. The, the wounds are serious but non-life-threatening. And this just speaks to a, a lot of different things. It speaks to the randomness of, of some of these things. It speaks to how unbelievable that these situations are, that, that a young person walking out from, a, from an apartment building is shot randomly. Uh, a 20-year-old is shot randomly. They're very concerning. And for us uh, in, in policing, we intend to step up our vigilance in these areas. We'll be putting a command post in the area of the Mount Olive uh, homicide from yesterday. We'll be bringing other resources in from other areas. Uh, this is very, very concerning to obviously us and the community. So. So you're suggesting those two are random. Are you suggesting there's a good chance that this shooting at Mount Olive was random as well? I have no knowledge to that at all. And, and as the detective sergeant has said, this is very early on in the investigation. And, and obviously, uh, we hope to get some further leads. And as mentioned, please, if people in the community have information, call police or call Crime Stoppers. Um, certainly, this is a community concern. It's community safety. And we all want to make the community safer. So, sorry, when did those two random shootings happen? Was it 10 p.m. on, what was the Saturday day? night. Saturday. And June then, 1st. And then Monday, uh, Sunday morning. Well, yeah. yeah. And what do you say to the neighborhood or the population that is worried right now? We thought with a lot of people this morning, very worried about what happened last night there. What do you say to them to reassure them? Well, <laughs> what, what can we say? That's a very serious situation that took place. And I certainly am not going to get into the investigation. It's, it's homicides investigation. But from a community safety perspective, I can tell you, you they will see a lot more police in the area. They will, will see our community uh, station in the area. We're asking people to come and speak to the officers that will be assigned in the community station. And we need information to help us. Right. I mean, in the Driftwood neighborhood, we had those random bus stop shootings earlier um, in the year. I, they haven't been solved. And now you're saying there were two what appear to be random shootings on Saturday night and early Sunday morning. And then obviously this mass shooting last night, which we just, I guess it's too early to tell. I mean, what could be behind random shootings? How alarming is it that teenagers, young people or groups of people are just being shot at? It's very disturbing. I think there isn't anyone in this room or this community isn't outraged. Are you, are you worried about gang violence flaring up once again in this neighborhood, especially considering we're, what, 350 meters from a police station where the shooting happened? Of course we're concerned about gang violence. That's always a concern we have, whether it's now or whether it's 
six months previous or whatever, gangs are a concern. And, and we try and deal with gangs and gang members, and, and we have all kinds of different initiatives to deal with, with the gang problem. And we'll continue to do that. But unless we have specific information, it makes it very difficult to do anything. So, I mean, is there concern that last night's shooting could, could have been part of the, the random shooting? So you just don't know? Is it just fair to say that that's a consideration? I mean, everything is a consideration right now. As the detective sergeant said, this is very early on in the investigation. There's a lot of pieces at work to try and put all this together. And, uh, you know, it takes time to do that. And a lot of neighbors are concerned about, you know, they feel gun violence is very common in their community. This wasn't that surprising to the folks some of us talked to. But is there anything, you know, that, that your police jurisdiction is doing to kind of reduce the number of, of random shootings, you know, more than just stationing, uh, you know, a bigger presence out there? Yeah. Well, we, there certainly are a number of things that we're doing. We have community officers in the area that are assigned to those specific areas that, that are engaged every day of the week. Uh, we have uh, pat extra patrols in areas. We can't be everywhere, but we're certainly trying to target areas where this type of gun violence is taking place. Are you advising the school to stay closed beyond today, or is it expected to open after today? No, we're not advising the school. They'll make their own determinations on that. Superintendent, clearly this has a ripple effect across the community. I mean, we talked to one mom who said she watches TV on the floor with her kids because she doesn't want to sit on the couch worried that there might be bullets that come through the window. Kids not going to school today is a ripple effect of this violence. I mean, what's your commitment to the people in that community to make sure that they can be safe and walk around their community freely? So we do do a lot of different things, and, and we have a gang prevention unit that tries to deal with young people that are in gangs or, or could be in gangs. That's, that's one unit that we have in place. Uh, we have our neighborhood officers, community neighborhood officers, that are engaged specifically in neighborhoods where, where there are gangs. Uh, we do police pastor walks in the area where the police and pastors walk in an area, engage with the people, talk about issues that are going on, and try and deal with those types of issues that we hear from the people. And, and it is disturbing to hear about a, a, a mom who has to sit on the floor because she's afraid of gun violence. I mean, I don't think any of us could rationalize that. So, but... A lot of it is having that police presence out there and being visible and letting people see us. But having said that, we can drive away after being there and something can happen. That's the reality. One of the ladies across the street said that officers do show up a lot. She, she knows that they're there. She sees them in the parking lot. Sometimes they're there 20 or 30 minutes. Is that more disturbing, the fact that your officers sit maybe in that parking lot late at night or whatever, and then they leave and this this happens, like you're trying to do an initiative or something to keep it safe, but it's a big, they pick and choose almost to show up. Well, you know, resources being what they are, it's very difficult to, you know, have people there in, in the number of hours that we'd like, but but we're certainly trying. Thank you, Dr. Okay, we've been listening to Detective Sergeant Philip Campbell with the Homicide Unit, along with Superintendent Ron Verner with the Toronto Police Department. Give more details about last night's shooting that happened in the parking lot of North Albion Collegiate Institute in Etobicoke. Toronto Police, they were called there just before 11 o'clock last night. Five people had been shot. One man died. Another is in serious life-threatening condition. The other three are being treated for gunshot wounds. Police are saying that the men were part of a, a gathering of about 15 to 20 people who were in the parking lot after playing soccer. They all range in ages from 40 to 60 years old. Right now, police are looking for two suspects in a black or dark colored truck. In the meantime, people in the area of Mount Olive Drive, which, by the way, is closed between Kipling and Silverstone Drive. You can expect to see more police. And then we also heard police mention other random shootings Saturday night, one in the area of Martin Grove and Albion. We will continue our coverage of this story live with CP24's Beatrice Vaseman.